Well, yes, thank you very much for this nice introduction and invitation. So yes, we will uh, talk a little bit about some weather patterns that can be assumed to belong to the Greek natural habitats. And we will take two examples, the example of the Saronic Gulf Sea Breeze and the Battle of Salamis, and the example of uh, Katevatos um, wind in Arachova that uh, played an important role in the Battle of Arachova with Karaiskakis in 1826. So to start from uh, what is happening nowadays in the Mediterranean, uh, as you may all know, uh, the Mediterranean has been characterized by the IEPCC as a hotspot for climate change. And actually, as you can see here, this is the, the global map, the Americas, uh, North and South America, Europe, Africa, and so on. And this is a, a observation. So it's not projections, scenarios. It is climate change as we already experience it in all the regions. And uh, Mediterranean uh, is definitely a hot spot uh, for, for hot extremes, but also for other uh, weather phenomena such as um, severe weather phenomena. Uh, but uh, the Mediterranean, uh, we also say that it is, uh, you know, the cradle of uh, Western civilization. So there is a lot of monuments and sites that must be preserved in our region. And this is why uh, the Greek initiative has been formed together with uh, UNESCO, WMO and other international organizations uh, in order to identify these monuments and create a database with the hazards that um, they may experience in the near future due to climate change. And uh, in this, um, in this uh, way to select uh, specific sites for pilot studies and for understanding what should be done in the future for their uh, preservation. Uh, a first step is already done by the Academy of Athens, and we have uh, um, just a few months ago published a paper uh, on the climate change threats to cultural and natural heritage uh, UNESCO sites in the Mediterranean. Actually, uh, it is about 240 something uh, monuments where we examined uh, several uh, hazards such as the extreme heat, wildfires, uh, precipitation, uh, the sea level rise, and also the seismicity, the earthquakes. And uh, it's an, a study with a lot of information, but in short, uh, we, we see that a lot of uh, monuments are expected to experience problems. And the actually the situation is more than doubled in, in hazard, uh, while considering what we used to say, the business as usual scenario, the LCP 8.5, uh, which is actually, in my opinion, and not only my opinion, the, the realistic scenario, because as you may know, the um, Gutierrez, the general secretary of the United Nations, also mentioned that we are on a highway to hell for uh, climate change. So we should expect to live with this in the coming uh, years. But uh, when we talk about Greece, you know, the cultural heritage and natural surroundings are binded together. And it's not only like beautiful sites and stones that will, it's good to, to, to visit and to admire because everything in Greece carries a lot of uh, history, centuries of history behind its stone, its marble, its uh, monument and so on. And this must be taken into account uh, in a, altogether. And uh, so we will discuss here about two such exa examples of climatological uh, weather patterns that are the same throughout the centuries. Uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, the naval battle of Salamis and the sea breeze in the Saron Gulf, but also the downslope wind of Katevatos that uh, actually occurs due to gravity wave formation over Parnassos, as we will see um, in the following. 
uh, about the Battle of Salamis, I guess we all know the history and the importance of, the importance of this particular event that took place in the island of Salamis. Uh, we know that the Greeks uh, were inside the Straits of uh, Salamis, between Salamis and uh, the Piraeus uh, coasts, uh, while the Persians blocked the two exits of the island to, let's say, to not allow the, the Greeks to escape from uh, what they thought it was a trap. But in the end, it turned out to be their own trap, because we will see. Uh, so we started with the analysis of all the available measurements in the stations of Elefsina and Piraeus. And as you can see here at the wind roses, it is evident that the, at about 10, 11 uh, uh, in the morning, you, you, have, you start having the, north, the south, the south uh, wind component, which is actually the sea breeze from the Saronic uh, Gulf. And uh, in order to, to go a little bit deeper and, and analyze also the spatial distribution of this uh, weather pattern, we implemented the high resolution weather uh, and weather forecasting model WRF in a climatological mode that is driven by the era five atmospheric fields uh, and um, we constructed a statistic, statistically uh, sound uh, output for each hour in order to come up with, with the results on the evolution of the wind patterns inside the Saron Gulf uh, and the diurnal change of the wind uh, components. So actually, uh, what we found is that uh, at about 10 o'clock, you have the convergence line between the, the north residuals of the north winds from the night and the incoming south component of the sea breeze of, from the Saron Gulf. And this occurs exactly inside the Strait of Salamis, uh, which is also the area that the naval battle took place. And if we come and look at this together with the, with the ancient writers' evidence, we know that uh, during the night, uh, the Persians blocked the, the exits and uh, Aristides arrives from Aegina. In the early morning hours, we have religious acts, the speeches from uh, Themistocles and the other admirals uh, to the crews. The Greeks start the attack first with the pean that is known from Aeschylus Perse, Itepedes, uh, Elinon, and so on. But exactly after the attack, they, they, they make a tactical uh, retreat. So they row without turning their ships, they row backwards, first to trap the Persians deeper into the straits, and second to gain some more time until the, the sea bridge arrives. And this is exactly the moment when the, the counter attack of the Greek fleet starts. And the turmoil that is brought with the waves and the, the change of the wind patterns to the Persian um, ships assisted somehow the, the Greeks who were more experienced in this type of, of weather and managed to defeat uh, and uh, win this battle that took place under these conditions during the daylight. And in the evening hours, the wind again uh, shifts to western and northwestern directions, Zephyros, uh, which allowed the Persians to sail away and also brought all the, um, the, ship, the shipwrecks to, towards the coast. And going to the second example, we have the, the Battle of 1826 during the Greek Revolution with General Karaiskakis. 
The Greek troops are inside the village of Arachova, while the Ottoman troops are in the elevated uh, uh, slopes of mountain Parnassos. And this played a role because uh, actually Katevatos, as we learned from the local people, is a very well-known pattern. And uh, But when we looked at it with an meteorological uh, analysis, we found out that it is a typical downslope uh, wind that is uh, actually formed due to reflection of gravity wave, uh, gravity waves over the Parnassos because as the as the air masses pass the obstacle of the mountain, they oscillate, and reflection of um, if you have a critical point upwards, reflection of this energy may create a downslope wind, which happens at many cases, many places around the world. And it is also the case for Mount Parnassos. Well, this critical uh, layer is at the interface between the 8, 850 hectopascal flow that comes from the Northeast and the higher 500 hectopascal flow that is from the Southeast. And exactly at the interface between these two wind regimes, uh, you have the formation of a, of a critical uh, level. And this is more evident if one goes, if we go and take a, a cross section, a vertical cross section over Parnassos, which, which is here. And we can see that at about, uh, let's say five kilometers, the, the wind changes and you, the, the different air masses are evident because of the potential temperature um, abrupt changes. And this critical level that is the zero cross barrier wind component is very crucial in the formation of uh, vertical, uh, vertically propagating gravity waves of mountain waves, as we say them, because we have reflection at this level and uh, this energy goes back uh, towards the ground, uh, forming the, the downslope uh, winds. Uh, in the case of uh, Arachova, it is also very important because the, the, the downslope wind, which is evident here with the downward motions that bring cold, very cold and very violent um, and turbulent air uh, associated also with uh, snow and, um, uh, and uh, snowfall on the on the lee side of the mountain, and because Arachova is located on the lee side of uh, of the mountain with respect to the north uh, flow, this is why this type of uh, wind is very well known to the local people, and why also it played an important role in Greek uh, history in the history of Greek uh, revolution. And actually, uh, it was uh, the Greeks took it so important that uh, um, uh, they said it was some kind of divine uh, intervention, you know, to to their win in this uh, in this battle. So to summarize. Uh, Specifically in Greece, there are very many environmental patterns that can be considered to belong in what we say the intangible, intangible cultural heritage. I mean, the, the cultural monuments and the monuments of history are, are most of the times bounded with the surroundings and the environment. Uh, we know that, uh, and we learned that the, the ancient Greeks knew these climatological wind patterns and uh, knew how to take advantage, advantage of these diurnal wind changes. Uh, we know that uh, Katevatos uh, is actually a typical downslope wind due to uh, reflection of, um, of uh, uh, gravity waves, but uh, uh, exactly because it occurs inside the village, 
it is also very important for the local culture and uh, history. So uh, I hope it, it was not too long. And with this, I would like to conclude and give the floor to questions and discussion. Thank you very much.